Now try to think of a society, of a community, of a region, of your own country, where the people, scientists, let's say science, politicians, politics, work together, we would say go hand in hand, to build something good for the community, for the common good. Summer 2022. In Italy, we were breaking every possible temperature record, basically every month. And uh, in the Italian Climate Network, we were thinking with my colleagues and friends, what can we do towards the upcoming national election, September 25th? We were thinking, what can we do? How can we help the topic of climate change to be on the agenda? in the political debate. How can we make the topic of climate change central in that political debate, which was expected to become, uh, you know, we were going towards a game-changer election that year. And we thought, as every party in Italy has, by the law, to publish their own electoral programs on their websites and also on the website of the ministry, Let's start reading them, <laughs> let's start thinking, analyzing them, let's start seeing what they say on the topic of, of climate change. Of course, many people in other NGOs would have done that, and many journalists would have uh, wrote articles at some point. But we thought maybe we can also try to analyze these electoral programs in a scientific way. We're a network of experts and scientists in the end. And maybe we could have done that by inventing some criteria, by proposing a methodology to do that. And we started. Not a lot of people, actually, just uh, five people, including me and other colleagues from the Italian Climate Network, and we started. And the idea was to produce weekly evaluations on both the programs and what the political leaders were saying during the electoral campaign. To do that, First of all, you should trust politics, and this is a key point. You should trust politics because we wanted to trust what they wrote in their programs. If you write that, if you say that, you believe in that, right? That's what you're proposing to the people. So, we started doing this together with uh, author, musician, creator, scientist, professor Stefano Caserini, part of our network and the association Climalteranti, uh, together with other friends and colleagues, we started calling other scientists to, to build the exercise. And we decided to keep it very simple and easy to understand for everybody. 20 scientists doing the work, 10 questions, 10 points for each question. Questions like, is climate change at all in your electoral program? Do you talk about it in a sectorial way? Is there a paragraph on climate change and the environment? Or is it a cross-cutting issue? Do you talk about climate change in a way which reflects science or in general terms? Or do you also keep in your program both what the science says and what other kind of people says? Ten points from zero to 10. Again, 20 scientists, 10 questions, 10 points. We started. When we started, at the beginning, we thought, well, it's a nice thing we do <laughs> as Italian Climate Network. It's something that will stay there on our website. We keep it there, and when we have free time at the end of the day, we keep working on that. But at some point, we've noticed that something was changing. We've noticed that we started receiving calls from politicians, people in the parties, and they were telling us, oh, I saw your first evaluation on the website, and, you know, we wrote the program in a rush, you know, it's summer, and uh, <laughs> maybe we, we will publish something else, we will send you a note, we will publish an annex on that. And I think we saw some of these programs changing, different PDFs on the websites. We, st we started seeing politicians tweeting about the evaluations that we were publishing every week. We thought initially that 
the weekly evaluation was supposed to monitor the tweets and the public de de declarations in t on TV, not the programs on the website. But that was happening all at the same time. We started receiving calls for interviews from, me from the media, from journalists, and uh, at some point we received an interview request from a very big newspaper in Italy, which is clearly linked to a political party, and that was right the, day, uh, the day right before the first evaluation. And after we had published that, the interview request disappeared, and they never called back, <laughs> because they saw that their party was not doing that well, initially, at least. One day I was preparing some, some slides, I was preparing a PowerPoint with my amazing PowerPoint skills that everybody knows, of course. And uh, I was very concentrated, at some point I received a call from my colleague Valeria from the communications, and she tells me, listen Jacopo, mm, uh, we're fine with the slides, concentrate on something else, go ahead with something else. And I was like, no, but the slide, you know the slide for the website. Jacopo, the, we already had the slides, because that TV channel did the slide for us, because we're going prime time this evening on TV. And uh, No, but my slides, yeah, Jacopo, it's okay. <laughs> they did that for us. And, and that happened, and we realized at that point, when we were already all over the place and everybody was tweeting about us, that some way it was not just a game between friends in the Italian Climate Network anymore, but we were doing something big, they would say, but I would add a point here, we were doing a public service. Because not only we were helping citizens in Italy understand what different parties and political leaders were saying about climate change in their programs, but we were also helping them, the parties themselves, to understand and to better fine-tune what they were saying during the electoral campaign, as we were seeing these programs changing. In the end, we will never know whether we had an impact, which kind of impact. Of course we had some impact, but it's not measurable, you know? How many people voted for a party because of our evaluations? How many people changed their minds? We cannot know. For sure, we know that that changed something, and the original idea to keep that work on our website completely open source, completely transparent, with the CVs of all involved scientists published on the website. And trust me, we were never attacked by anybody. In this time of polarized politics where you're with number one or with number two, we were never attacked by anybody during that time because the process was so transparent that it was impossible to say who's behind you. These people, go on the website, these people. It's them. It's there because it has to stay there and it's a gift to democracy that uh, we developed and we think it's an, it's an instrument to help our own democracy and democracies also outside Italy. And uh, it might seem impossible, but if we did that, everybody can do that. And it's not just one of these sentences, you know, one of these motivational sentences. You can actually do that in your community, in your region. Uh, just build a group, build a team, because it's something you cannot do that alone. With my colleagues, we, spend, we spent nights <laughs> working on that after some point. Uh, build a team, and how do I reach out to scientists? Well, it might seem incredible, but you need to know just one of them. Just look on the website of your university, in your city or town or region, call one, and for sure he or she will know some, someone else. They will think, oh yes, that colleague of mine is working on this topic, and maybe also that colleague of mine. And maybe I remember I met this person at that conference. You just need five to start. It's already an evaluation. And this message is to say that you can do that, and you can help your own local, regional, national democracy. And this was supposed to be the end of my speech, but while I was preparing this speech for today, we received some news that I would like to share with you, that actually that happened. This group of young people, you can see from their faces, they're happy they have worked on their own climate commitment index, 
taking our own methodology. They called us to ask permission of, to use that, and of course the answer was yes, it's on the website for this reason. And uh, it's a group of young people from the autonomous province of Trentino in Italy. Uh, they had their own provincial elections last month, and, uh, and they did the same. They presented the results all over the province, and they managed also to uh, to be on the, on the news, on the media. So you can do that, we can do that. These guys, this group of young people did that, exactly as we did some time before that. So as it is not impossible, try again to think of that kind of society, of country, of region, of local community where you live. Try to think of a society where the people science, scientists, politicians, politics, work together and do something better for the climate, which means also for the common good. Thank you very much.